All right, I guess we can just get started. So hi again, it's me again. <laughs> uh, uh, when I'm uh, not working on, uh, so I like to work on pretty technical stuff, but every now and then uh, I need some lighter work to do. So one of the things that uh, one of my kind of pet projects uh, to work on when, I, when my brain is hurting is uh, to look into trying to get the Mesa website uh, make it a little bit better than what it is now. Um, so this is not meant to be a talk. This is meant to be just a kind of a discussion. Uh, but I have a little bit of a uh, presentation to begin with to kind of like uh, present my view of things and what can, what can be done better. And uh, I have some proposals and stuff like that. So uh, yeah. So for the first thing to talk about is what's what's wrong with Mesa 3D.org right now. Uh, it's it's a pretty old website. Uh, it was written yeah uh, 15 years ago, kind of the current version of the of the web part of it, not necessarily the content. Uh, it's like written in HTML 4.401. It's uh, uh, mobile phones didn't have uh, browsers back then. If you ever like try to go to mesa3d.org on your phone to kind of read some documentation, maybe while you're on the train, it's it's not fun. Uh, this is kind of what started my itch here. I kind of like want, wanted to check some stuff while I was on the bus, and yeah, it wasn't wasn't uh, very fun. Um, so now we're 15 years later, and the world has changed quite a bit. Uh, we have HTML5 now, and translating kind of the Mesa website is, uh, to that is a little bit of a pain. Uh, we have better markup languages and tools for, for dealing with this. Um, maybe some of this was over, already around back then, but uh, not quite as popular and adopted. Um, we have uh, static site uh, generators and uh, GitLab pages, uh, and GitLab CI and stuff like that in, on freedesktop.org that we can use. And I think kind of the thing that whenever I digs into this bothers me the most is that we're kind of like like thrown all of the web presence stuff on Mesa into one bucket uh, and kind of stirred it around. And we're, we're getting like a website that's uh, kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, it's, it's not a great home page. Like if you want to read about Mesa, it's kind of like off-putting. You don't like, you have to dig for the right information. Uh, as a documentation, this documentation is kind of bad because you have to, like, if you're reading the entry stuff, you have to open it in a browser to read it in a reasonable way. Uh, the raw HTML isn't fun to read. Uh, we keep updating it with the broken HTML stuff because you know HTML is hard. Um, yeah, and the, then you know the releases are just kind of like in a subfolder on the same site. Uh, there and uh, you know you don't get any any good uh, CDN or distributions around the world uh, for the releases either. So it's kind of like it's not it's not great at either either of the things. So uh, my proposal is to split it in three uh, into three different sites. Uh, one is the homepage that would be mesa3d.org. Uh, this is where you go to kind of read about the the project. Uh, it should be built, I think, using a static uh, site generator like Jekyll or Hugo or, you know, it's not really important. Uh, just the important bit is that uh, it's easy, I think, to read and edit uh, and uh, work on. It should probably live in a separate repository from the, from the website because I think the homepage shouldn't really contain uh, things that pertain to the source code. That's, that's for the documentation and for, for what you get when, once you download the source code. It should contain stuff like where do you download it? Where do you like you know go for file, filing issues? Uh, where do you read documentation? Yeah, like uh, all of these things. Uh, then the documentation, uh, I suggest having as a separate site, something like docs.mesa3d.org. Uh, we should build this using a... Uh, from CI, from the master branch or release branch of Mesa, uh, using Sphinx or Gitbook or one of those more modern uh, documentation tools. 
uh, this means that we can actually read the entry sources uh, in a reasonable way uh, on a yeah, human readable market format. And uh, yeah, releases I don't really have a great answer to. Uh, it's a little bit of a pain. Um, so GitLab pages, where, which we ideally, I think, want to move the website into being hosted at, uh, doesn't deal great with a large set of uh, static binary files. Uh, you have to upload them for every build of the site. You have to copy them into the into the sets of stuff, and yeah. So I'm w I'm wondering if we should have like just keep a separate uh, web server instance running and uh, use some uh, reverse proxy to uh, to put it in the right space, or we move like stop uploading where we upload and and uh, you know up move to somewhere else. Uh, the problem with moving is that we don't want to break links. We don't want to break current build scripts. So, uh, so th I think we need to, f at least for some time, live with a uh, reverse proxy on top to, to get the links to, s to keep working. Uh, yeah, so the benefits here are that we can now, once we split it like this, we can build a kind of flashy marketing site uh, or like a, for the home page where you can like read about the project kind of uh, stuff like that and it can be like a practical uh, you can have a pl practical and clean documentation site so you kind of like separate between what's what's like attention grabbing and what's kind of like f uh, pushing the information kind of uh, first and foremost yeah and then we kind of get away from the whole jack of all trades master of non shenanigans that I think we currently do uh, we can yeah edit uh, the documents uh, in like some sane uh, markup language instead of raw HTML. Uh, and right now we have the same HTML boilerplate repeated in every document. So if you ever want to change a detail about that boilerplate right now, uh, yeah, it's it's not great. It's super painful. Uh, and I think uh, we can. The last point here is like I think we, we can move to something that's a little bit less opaque because right now it's not really obvious to figure out how to uh, how to change the website. Uh, like yes, there's documentation; it's all in the tree there. You can submit patches, but it's not really documented on the website. You don't know. Like if you go to mesa3d.org, you have no idea that this is actually the docs folder of the website. Uh, so we could put like an edit this page. Uh, GitLab, for instance. There's more, I think we can work more on, on uh, this pro uh, process there. Uh, so here's my proposal uh, for a new homepage. So I've built this um, site. This is kind of what it looks like. Uh, it's it's not not a fantastic web website, but it's, it's kind of what I was able to uh, clobber together. Um, it's built using Jekyll and Bootstrap, uh, and I made a custom, like, so it's not using any of the kind of built-in themes because I wanted to have a little bit of familiarity with the old website, so you kind of, like, recognize a little bit that you're at the Mesa website. So the little gears in the corner there and, uh, and uh, like, a dark header with a, with a white uh, background. Um, it's mobile-friendly. I don't show this here, but it's... It's, it reads uh, like works really nicely on phones. Uh, it builds from builds HTML on the CI using GitLab pages, and uh, yeah, it contains all of the the kind of the static parts about Mesa, so stuff that it doesn't change with every release. Um, yeah, and it also provides yeah, ne in the news are actually. Like if you go to mesa 3 dorg right now, you get all news since the beginning of time in one long page. This actually gives you just like the latest ones. There's a page. There's a link here to reading all of the news, and that's a, pa a paginated page, so you get like ten news entries at the time, and you don't have to load uh, stuff from the mid 90s and stuff there. And the gears turn. The gears turn if you hover them. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of my proposal uh, for the website. 
here's uh, kind of my proposals for the doc site. Uh, this is uh, this builds uh, the documentation. So this converts the documentation to Sphinx, and uh, and it's uh, uh, yeah. The link is actually the wrong one. I'm sorry. They should just remove intro.html. I changed that since I wrote the slides. Uh, this effort was started by Laura Abbott. She wrote some scripts to automatically convert. I've uh, updated them a bit and, and uh, fixed up some things. Uh, when she worked on it, she was trying to replace the whole Mesa 3D website with this uh, Sphinx site. Um, I wasn't a big fan of that, uh, particularly because of the news. So there's two things. One is that she, like branding of the website was kind of important when, when it's the website. Uh, so she like there was some debate back and forth about making a proper Mesa lo logo and stuff like that. And I kind of, uh, this gets very opinionated and uh, people yeah, have different ideas. Um, and uh, Sphinx doesn't handle pagination at all. So the new site, uh, the news page was still like miles long, uh, scroll forever uh, kind of thing. So, and uh, as far as I could see, I, I tried for a while to find something for Sphinx for this. It doesn't really seem to exist. I guess I could have patched it, but I. Just a correction, it's not Laura uh, Abbott, it's Expert. Hmm? It's La Laura Expert who was helping. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. My bad. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, you're right. Uh, my fault, uh, my apologies to, to both of them <laughs> for getting the wrong person there. Um, yeah, so yeah, this also does like the CI dance to convert stuff. Uh, as a kind of nice added benefit, we could move it to, to host the stuff on the read the docs.org infrastructure. They have some nice bells and whistles where you can uh, where you can have uh, multiple versions of the docs, so you can actually uh, check the version of the docs that matches the version of Mesa you have. This is interesting, kind of, because uh, you sometimes change the environment variables, and if you're stuck on like an LTS release of something, it's kind of annoying if uh, if uh, the wrong information is there. Um, yeah, and then finally for releases, yeah, that's the. The current situation is that we're hosting these releases in three different URLs, uh, one over HTTPS. So the nice thing is that it seems we have almost forever advertised the top link and the top two ones only. So none of these are under, or none of the first two ones are under the main repo. So maybe we're lucky and no one actually has a script where it downloads it from that unadvertised mesa3d.org slash archive link. Uh, which is what requires the reverse proxy thing I talked about before. Uh, this needs some, I think we need to do some logging and stuff to figure out if that is the case or not. Um, yeah, and changing it, as I said before, will uh, will uh, break these URLs if we move it. So my, my best proposal, I think, right now is just to kind of, yeah, keep it at, uh, well, keep it there and, but, Rever uh, like <laughs> reverse proxy this URL and have that hosted separately from the GitLab pages. So we keep the old website, but kind of delete the page and, and do some redirects there, and uh, it's easy. Um, we could also use a proper CDN, but I'm not really sure if we care about that, because I think most people use distro packages for uh, Mesa, so we don't really have a huge load, I think. Uh, but both the kernel and GNOME has proper CDNs, so we could also maybe piggyback on those, kind of just start going there. Uh, I'm getting a signal that is 15 minutes left. I don't think that's true. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so this is, um, this is pretty much all I have. I, now I want to hear if anyone has uh, any ideas or, or uh, suggestions on how we can improve this. Yeah, sure. for whatever page, the problem is more of the content. So the, the content is really not uh, geared towards uh, people who are not familiar with the topic. Um, that's, to me at least, the, the more urgent thing to really make it uh, that people can contribute, that one can start 
Afro's cousin to read together. So currently, I think the, the wrap up is, is you. <laughs> Right, so uh, what, what he's saying, if someone didn't hear, is that uh, the problem right now for many people are, uh, or at least f were for you when you got introduced to Mesa, was not so much the packaging, but more of the content. And uh, I agree that the content isn't great, uh, but I hope that making this into a easier to edit format will make it a little bit less painful and kind of will incentivize people to keep things more up to date. But that remains to be seen, I think. I, I, I think it's hard to say that that's definitely going to happen, but I hope so. Uh, this is not the first time we see such effort or such drive, and definitely I think it's not the last. How exactly are we going to pursue to get caught on this time to make this happen? Well, so, um, so yeah, so if, if someone, I think everyone heard that. Uh, yeah, so, so how we get this to happen, I think uh, I'm not, so I, I'm the only one, like I'm working on this kind of alone, but I'm, I'm uh, kind of a little bit uh, uh, talking with some of the free desktop uh, uh, admins and stuff on the side. So I think there's, there's more people who want this. And I think, I, I think we just at some point need to make a community decision and kind of move forward. Uh, and I think, I hope that this is, like what I'm presenting here, is, is enough to move forward. But, uh, but I want to, of course, have everyone be able to see what they think, uh, say what they think about it first. I don't want to break anything for anyone. Um, so I've been following that uh, for a bit as well. And I think everybody agrees on the idea of doing that. At the, basically, the only thing that was preventing it was the technical issue of the archive and how to actually keep providing the troubles without uh, breaking the URL for everyone. That was pretty much the, the last issue. Once we figure out a good solution for that, I think everybody agreed on how to actually do the rest. Yeah. And I c just to fill in on that, the, the free desktop uh, uh, admins that I'm talking to, mostly Daniel Stone, uh, is really not happy about the idea of having having to maintain a reverse proxy f uh, for a long time. I totally understand that, uh, but I think right now, kind of the situation is kind of similar anyway, because there's already a reverse proxy for uh, for 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 this. So I think it's mostly a matter of reconfiguring what we have and kind of turn on some logging and kind of make sure that we know if. Uh, someone keeps using these old URLs and maybe we can turn it off a couple of years down the line. The kernel, the kernel moved all their releases with, I think, six months notice and just removed the old URLs and the world survived. We could also just say it's not that important. Like people have some, some time for themselves. I don't know. But since you use GitLab now, couldn't you use the pipeline to generate the files and just drop it there at the current uh, location? Uh, we could, yes, so we could. no reverse proxy extra needed and just have it built? Yes. When master commits come in, maybe every day? So, um, so the goal is kind of to find a way to avoid having to deal with this. But yes, we could have uh, we could untangle these things and solve one problem at a time. I think this is a good excuse for trying to solve both, though. But maybe not. So, I was going to say something similar to what he was saying about the like beginners getting started, um, and you showed a shot of your homepage, which did seem to fall into the same trap that I found a lot of websites do. Like, for example, when Rust changed their homepage, one of the major criticisms was before it was like you got there and the first thing you saw was a piece of Rust code showing you exactly what it did, what the advantages were. And then now that they've changed it, it's basically become almost for managers saying just like it's better, it's faster, use it. But it doesn't actually say anything about it itself. And yours as well there had like a basic introduction and latest news. So I, I, yeah, I think uh, so. I'm gonna just pull up the uh, the site here so we can. Uh, uh, 
Oh shit. Um, I don't. I'm not on any sort of Wi-Fi here. I guess. Yeah. So. Uh, Yeah, so I th I show kind of like which APIs are there and stuff like that. I'm not entirely sold of whether they should be c collapsed or not by default, but for mobile it's actually much nicer to uh, not get a wall of stuff before you get the news. Uh, maybe we could reorder it uh, to do that or something like that, but I think it's nice to have the kind of intro bit at first. Uh, the read more stuff takes it to the documentation site, to the introduction article there, uh, which is the old, uh, well, yeah, it, it uh, the old website takes you to directly to the, to the news. That's the only thing you see to begin with. Um, so I think... So is the introduction the one on... So I'm gonna. Oh, this is. This is not great, but okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this isn't uh, my my desktop and system system being high DPI here. Uh, yeah. So kind of like this is more of what I kind of envision. Uh, it's looking like on, on a desktop at least. So you kind of like get here and, uh, and you immediately see kind of what it uh, uh, provides of APIs. Yes, I know. What's your plan for this? Uh, this, like this is a mock-up. If we remove stuff, we remove stuff. I, like this isn't. Uh, I don't mean for for, like I don't mean for any of the content here to be final. I'm it's totally open for you know. But I mean just generally, like, because some prizes are going to be open to clients and some are not going to be. Yeah. So I wonder here. I mean, if we do what? Even without the logo to put in the name, then we we will need to say which I guess which drivers are going to be. Yeah. That's gonna be a so I I don't think so I don't think these things says that we're conforming for all drivers. I don't think we we violate the Chronos kind of uh, uh, trademark r rules here. Uh, but I think we should ask Chronos what they think. Yeah. Uh, I think this would be fair. Chronos is pretty friendly to the Mesa project, uh, so I, I'm not. Like I'm not too uh, worried if there's a logo we need to remove. Yeah. We like some of these things don't really have logos. I, for OpenCL, I really didn't want to use their horrible logo anyway, because uh, it's like looks so different and it kind of, uh, yeah, it's. Well, I, I guess anyway, I didn't have the risk in saying like not all private logos. Yeah, I mean that could we could just like write a, under the feature APIs there. Like yeah. note, some of these are not implemented for all hardware and stuff like that. I, yeah, maybe something that would be a good idea to kind of lower expectations a bit. Yeah, so there's like a list of drivers here also. I'm, uh, I'm. This is not all of the drivers. It's. Uh, I'm not sure if we. I don't know. I don't love this. This is like, uh, one thing that I don't love about this is it kind of forces us to order all the drivers. Uh, so I, I kind of like instead of having to choose an order, I just like. These are s sorted al alphabetically. The order we get it out of the file system for, like uh, when we iterate over the data set in, uh, in Jekyll. I don't know. Uh, also, I think these strings are probably wrong for a bunch of them. And like I think all of the driver maintainers should go through each of the strings here and verify that they're reasonably correct. Could we incorporate Mesa Matrix here? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that was be, this would be a good place to put a Mesa matrix, um, as long as we can find a way of reasonably integrating it into the build pipeline. But I, I, I'm sure we can. So 
So I have a question kind of to the audience here. Um, so a couple of people mentioned things like having a code on the, the website to show you how to use it and everything, but MISA is just an implementation of a bunch of uh, standards. We don't really, um, we're not uh, there to show you how to use GL or Mountain. We're kind of just providing a lift that allows you to do that. So. Yeah, no, 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 I wasn't what is that, 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 that was just an example from the Rust website. They used to have code. But yeah, yeah. But what is the kind of thing that you would want to see on the the website? Uh, well, even the getting started thing. <laughs> but like, getting started on what? Because to me, uh, Misa is kind of just a lib that you compile and install on your system, and that's it. Then you use your app normally, no. or you write an app. But then that's what uh, API you want to use for your app. So I don't really understand uh, what it is that you want to see. So that's my question. This might be a bit tangential to Mesa itself, but using cases, for example, that are uncommon, like using EGL in, in context of KMS and DRM, which doesn't really exist, you could hunt down that information. Whereas using EGL, GLX in the context of X is easy to find files. That's yeah. just not there, um, for example. Yeah. Um, that would be one thing. That um, for people who want to get started hacking on Mesa itself, introductions to its structure, how it works, um, you know, bits of code you could possibly hack on and modify to see how it affects Mesa's implementation so people can poke it and see how it wobbles um, yeah, kind of safely. Down. So what if you know, I mess with, I don't know, um, the shader compiler? Let me make it do something. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, because really, if it's the implementation, mostly, that's what you want people to start learning I think you need separate introductions for users and developers. Yes, no, like, absolutely. have it yeah, split. Yeah, yeah. Have it yeah. split. Like, hey, if you're a user, go here. The, these are the drivers you're looking for, and you can install it through your distro. Hey, if you're a developer, go here. Here are the docs. Start here. Yeah. So. Yeah. So for, from a kind of a perspective of what I've uh, shown here, I think like um, a lot of these things are kind of about which articles to have in the in the documentation, which I think is great to have more articles about uh, more stuff. Uh, and we need to put that somewhere. I, I don't know uh, I don't know if the website or the docs are best for every kind of article. Uh, guessing probably the, the docs uh, is gonna be where you want most of this technical stuff. So, so I think for that stuff, maybe we just want some kind of a visible link for the most important stuff uh, on the website to, to where we can put stuff like that. I'm not really myself looking into like writing a whole lot of content because it's not something I'm good at. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, stuff we could have better content at. And I think there's probably not enough people out there who's willing to contribute uh, some of their knowledge if, if they know how and where. So uh, so it could be that uh, making the barrier lower here might get us, get us some more documentation. So I could mention something else. I, uh, there's one thing that I'm not very happy, happy about with the current implementation there. I, I used Jekyll to, to build the whole thing, and uh, I pretty quickly re uh, stumbled into problems of performance with, uh, with Jekyll. So I've been considering rewriting it using something like Hugo or, or a faster one. The, the performance of the site generation? Or the yeah, generation? the site generator. Uh, I think about 30 seconds on my laptop, which it, it's not horrible, if, but it's not great to kind of like change one little detail and. Uh, uh, Wait 30 seconds until, and it's also like uh, you can run live mode with Jekyll, and that's faster than it does incremental builds. Yeah, but incremental builds, like if you change the template, okay. then it builds all of the pages, uh, and it kind of like just serves the old content until the build is done, which I think is not fantastic. Uh, so it's, uh, I think it's much better to work on than the current uh, solution, but it's still not. Perfect. But I also think that maybe the websites don't need as much work uh, mm -hmm. on it as the documentation site uh, in terms of content. So maybe it's okay. I think it's 
for now, I'm happier with this than the current solution. Uh, so I would be happy to move on with this and then look into performance later, for instance. <laughs> Hmm? Yeah, I think that that would be my next thing to try. Uh, I've used Hugo a little bit. I get very confused by Hugo. Feels like I'm too dumb for Hugo or something. But uh, but maybe I should give it another try. I've seen people rebuild Jekyll sites in Hugo with a kind of getting the exact same site. So. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, I think the only thing is that Hugo is a little bit more insistent on having all of your content being like a tree. Yeah, it's like everything is like directories or nodes, kind of. Where, where, whereas in Jekyll, it's just page, it's all just pages, and you kind of insert the links yourself. Like the relationship between the articles are uh, up to the content, and in Hugo, it's kind of like part of the structure. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, maybe I, I, I've, I. So as I said, I felt very stupid trying to use Hugo. I feel like I'm a little bit too dumb for it. Uh, so uh, maybe there's something that I just don't get. Yeah. So I got the message that we're 15 minutes left here. Uh, so yeah, and there probably the next speaker wants to connect soon. So uh, yeah. If, but if anyone has any more questions, we or uh, ideas. Yeah. 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 Right. Seems like the discussion is over. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot.